Welcome to the regular meeting of City Council, March the 2nd, 2020. Our first 15 minutes usually reserved for pu public comments. Kelly, has anyone signed up for public comments? No, sir. Is anyone in the audience like to make a public comment? If not, then we will go straight into the business session with a very short break for Chad in the back. He's probably not ready. Okay, at this time I'd like to call, call to order and we need to have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I'll ask Chris do you Jernigan. Want, do you want to make this announcement? Okay. Uh, due to scheduling conflict, there'll be no interpreter services during the City Council meeting. There's a training event for interpreters this evening at the time of our meeting. This time I'll ask Chris Jernigan to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Please the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'd like to call on the Reverend Tom Bland, First Baptist Church, to lead us in an invocation. Tom, thank you for being here. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty and all-loving God, maker of all that was, is, or ever will be, and giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you and praise you for all the wonderful resources we find all around us here in Morganton, for the splendor of the natural resources that you blessed us with, for the beauty of the sky and the sunlight, for the fact that we have four distinct seasons, for the great blessing we have in one another in this place that is so characterized, and rightly so, by civic pride and civic engagement and all the gifts and talents of those who are members of this community in this area. We pray, Lord, for each one, as each one bears a part of the responsibility in ensuring that we continue to be all that we can be here in this place as good stewards of the great blessings and the great gifts that you've bestowed upon us so generously. May we always be grateful. And tonight, Lord, we give special thanks and praise for those who are in service to you, who are serving as mayor, city council members, members of the city staff, for whom we pray especially this evening. And in particular, as always, we lift up those associated with our public safety program here our police, our firefighters, and others who go the extra mile each and every day to ensure that we are safe and ensure that we are healthy. We do ask, Lord, that in this season of elections, one tomorrow and one forthcoming in a few months, that you would allow our spirit of cooperation and collaboration to continue, and we pray that people of goodwill, representing all types of perspectives and all opinions about all matters will continue to come together and do their part to make this area, make this community all it can be. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Next, introduce, introduction of council to my far right, Wendy Cato, City Council. Chris Jernigan, City Council. Louis Vina, City Attorney, Ronnie Thompson, your mayor, 
Sally Sandy, City Manager, Butch McSwain, City Council, and Chris Hawkins, City Council, and Kelly Russell, our Recording Secretary. Uh, public adv advocacy and issues and strategies. We have a special report tonight by Ed Phillips on travel and tourism update. Oh, we're going to let Philip come oh, first. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, Sorry Ed. Ed. Sorry. Oh, oh, hold on. We're going to ask Philip Pluckadoo to come forward, please, for a special introduction. Sorry, Philip. serving as a police officer and uh, he actually has been in law enforcement for the past 15 years uh, so we look forward to taking advantage of his investigative skills and his ability to, to work with and reason with folks as we bring them into compliance with various zoning uh, codes and nuisance codes and whatnot so without any further ado I'll introduce <laughs> Mike welcome and, and this, might, might I mention that he is one of four Mike's now in our office <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll get somebody. Well, like I tell them, just call me by my last name because that's what I've been used to. I'm sure these guys back here, they know everybody calls you law enforcement by your last name, not by your first name. But I just want to say I appreciate the opportunity to give it to me by Philip. Um, my first week here, I, it's, been a, it's been a day and night difference. Um, definitely felt welcome here by the staff. Mike, thanks. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome to Morganton. Okay, Ed Phillips. We can't wait to see this. We can't wait to see this presentation. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to present here tonight. But before we get started, I wanted to show the audience and folks at home and you guys some of the marketing that we do because oftentimes you don't get to see it because you're not our target. The target's in other places. So if Chad would uh, roll the video, this is a one minute video. We have a nine-member board of directors. Uh, this year, just recently, uh, the county commissioners appointed a new board. Um, Scott Moe is our chair. Uh, Marissa Angie is our vice chair. Dan Whitson is our treasurer. Rob Winkler from the city of Morganton is on our uh, board representing the city in the Morgan Parks and Recreation Office. And then you can see the others that are down through there. These are all folks that are represent the tourism industry or collect the occupancy tax and participate in the marketing of our county. We're funded by a 6% tax added to hotels, motels, cabins, vacation rentals, and other accommodations. Um, right now, uh, you know, we're having a new hotel open uh, this week, which is exciting. We also have about 140 and growing number of vacation rentals in Burke County. Um, those are Airbnbs, VRBOs, privately owned, and um, uh, offering a unique place for people to stay when they come here. Um, tourism marketing revenue for Morganton and Valdez, who also get a portion of the occupancy tax, about 136,000 for Morganton and 76 for Valdez. Our 2019-2020 uh, budget 
uh, $605,000. And we do have some marketing objectives, things that we want to do with this money, and that's increase visitors, expand visitation to our Burke County Visitor Center, boost occupancy tax revenue through all of those places I just mentioned, create new jobs directly and indirectly related to tourism. For example, the new hotel is going to have a significant number of jobs in the downtown area and providing uh, economic boost to the, the whole county. Hit the right button. Share community information, as I'm doing now. And elevate meetings and conferences. So one of our initiatives that we're not going after now is bringing small meetings and conferences to Burke County and other events. And we're having some success for that, and we expect that to grow here in the next couple of years. So 2018, so we have to go back actually about um, a year and a half to get to 2018 when we had the results of our um, statewide and then county uh, economic impact numbers. We saw a 5.8% visitor spending increase up to $107 million spent in Burke County by visitors. By the way, we beat the growth. We beat all our neighboring counties that year. We had a 9.6% increased occupancy tax revenue over the previous year. And that's one of the highest we've seen. We had 3,327 folks come through the Burke County Visitor Center. And media tours attracted 15 journalists from five states. That's one of our most effective outlets for promoting Burke County. Our occupancy tax revenue has grown substantially. It has almost doubled in 10 years. I'd love to see it double again in 10 years with more hotel. And this was done with no new hotel rooms, by the way. So in the next 10 years, we're going to have an additional accommodations here that will allow us to grow that occupancy tax revenue. People stay here, they'll spend more money here. Mm -hmm. Public relations. So what do we do? We have media tours, and then we have media requests. Let me exp Media tours is pretty straightforward, where we have folks, we invite them in on a tour of the county, and we host them for two or three days, and we we pay all their expenses. We even give them a little travel money to get here. Media requests. So media requests is something we don't plan, but we get phone calls or emails like we did on Sunday, yesterday. We have a reporter from the Washington Post coming in later this week um, to tour Morganton, stay downtown, and is here specifically to look at the fresco and look at comma. But we take advantage of that while they're here and show them other things to do um, while they're in town. And that happens quite frequently. So our press releases and our media tours equal published articles. And you guys may remember in October, the Linville Gorge cover with Our State Magazine. We actually worked on that for over three years. Um, we hosted uh, writers from our state. We hosted the editor. We hosted their graphics department. And then also with Carolina Country, we had a freelance writer come in, and she's been on our tour several times, our media tour. And we always eat different places, but one of the keys is we go to, we go to the JD's and J.D. Smokehouse and Rutherford College, and they made the cover, Carolina Country, and were voted by the membership of Carolina Country, um, the best barbecue in North Carolina. And then you can also see Boom Magazine, the North Carolina Travel Guide that we're in prominently this year. And in 2018, we had 125-plus magazine, newspaper, and Internet articles published on Burke County. Everything from the Charlotte Observer to Travel and Leisure to the Blue Ridge, um, also, Blue Cross Blue Shield, this is interesting, they have a monthly blog, it's a, a health blog, and they've written several times about get outside in Burke County, and so that came through our um, media tours as well. You've seen our billboards on I-40, ask us anything, people <laughs> laugh when they come in and say, can I really ask you anything? You're like, yeah, we might know it, but we're kind of specific around here. Fall color reports updated daily. This year we had fall color tours on the Ridgeline Trolley. We hosted 265 passengers from all over North Carolina that spent the night here. Some of them did. Um, some of them ate dinner here and uh, spent a lot of time here and more money than ever. And we're, we hope to um, offer more tours this next year. Winter Hikes Excellent Views is our winter campaign. If we just get a little snow, it'd make a lot, little better. Not a lot, just a little bit. So our Burke County Visitor Center is located just south of the courthouse uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And we have seasonal hours June through October on Saturdays from 10 to 3. We've kind of experimented over time with that, and that seems to be about the best period when we can catch people on Saturday. Ridgeline Trolley. So um, we have been running the trolley now for five years. We've proven the business model works. Um, we've used it for weddings and economic tours. 
and excursions and fall color tours, special events. Um, we've also just purchased another trolley that's uh, a little newer, looks essentially the same, um, that we'll be picking up and bringing back on Wednesday. And we look forward to having that one, and then we're going to sell this one. So we've kind of used it, and, and we need more passenger capacity. This, this one, the current one seats 20. Our new one will seat 27 passengers. So why do people come here? And I just quickly want to go through a list. These are some of the top reasons, the attractions. Publicly owned, the state parks, the national forest, which includes the Linville Gorge, Catawba Meadows Park, and all the events the Parks and Rec puts on there, and the Greenway, the Blue Ridge Parkway. You know, we do have the National Park Service here. We have the National Forest and two state parks. And the Fauna Flora Trail is a growing attraction around Lake James. Privately owned, we have three wineries and vineyards, five craft breweries with tasting rooms, an apple orchard, Perry's Berries, Blueberry Picking, um, which is one of my favorite places. I'm not supposed to have a favorite, but I go out there and pick blueberries every year, and they're great. Um, outdoor drama, you know, we're, 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 we have the second oldest outdoor drama in North Carolina, and in Valdez, that's an important part of our uh, cultural history here. And then our zip line, Steel Creek Park Campground, and Day Use Area, the Trail of Faith, and Jonas Ridge Snow Tubing. We also get out and we go to these events and we put up a tent and we welcome visitors and we hand out information and we answer questions and engage them with things that they want to know about in Burke County. So in 2020, what are we going to do this year? Uh, where we're looking at developing new tourism businesses, but supporting the existing businesses, including the new hotels and their efforts to attract more visitors. And get out and speak to civic and government organizations on the economic impact tourism has in our community. A lot of people don't realize it. You know, there's 750 full-time jobs in Burke County that are directly related to tourism, and that's a lot of jobs. And also continue to recruit small meetings and conferences to Burke County. Research and surveys. So we've done some intercept surveys to find out where our visitors are coming from. We did one back in May at Lake James State Park. It was quite interesting to see where they come from. And that day in Lake James, um, a significant number of visitors were from Asheville, day trippers. So. It's the largest, uh, prettiest lake with the most facilities um, closest to Asheville. So what do we see? We see family relocations um, increasing here. A lot of folks coming, still coming through the visitor center looking to move here. And then weekend visitor growth. And I think you'll see more and more of that as the new downtown hotel opens and we get other accommodations here that we'll have more weekend folks staying here and spending money in, in Morganton. So that's my presentation. Thank any, you. Any questions for Ed? Chris? Yeah, Ed, so where, at the um, tourism office itself, where do you see most folks coming from who are coming into Morgan? So we, we do keep records every month, and we do uh, compile a list. And, of course, North Carolina is our number one state. And then Tennessee and Georgia and Florida and South Carolina are like the top five or six. And then it's kind of spread out. But we are seeing a large increase in the numbers of people from the West Coast, including California that are coming here, they're tired of the rat race out west, and they're looking to settle in a small town in the Appalachian Mountain area. So we see that, and we continue to see a strong number of folks from the northeast New England area and the upper Midwest, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and then New England. So it's kind of scattered, mostly east coast, but a few uh, growing areas from out west as well. I, I applaud the efforts yes. of you and the TDA, especially with the articles that have, yeah. have been coming out. It's pretty amazing. Has that, have you seen an increase in, in folks coming since those articles? Oh, yeah. yeah. We have people walk in there with the magazine in their hand. Wow. Especially when our state came out yeah. and they came in there. One of the funny things from the article in our state was another publication wrote about our state writing about us. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it, it's kind of weird, but uh -huh. yeah, they did. It's they nice. actually did. Yeah. 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 Anything else for Ed? Well, I saw our river walk was mentioned in this, this month's Blue Ridge Mm -hmm. uh, country uh, yep. art, um, article, and it was great. And, and the, Leonard, the guy at Atkins that wrote that article, we hosted him. It's been over two years ago when he was here for a walk. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a lot of time to get mm -hmm. before they're published, but it, it's paid off for us. Thanks. Great job. Great job, Ed. Thank you. Next is a, uh, an announcement about the census from our human resource director, Russ Shear. Russ, if you'll come forward, please. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to come on behalf of the Burke County Complete Count Committee uh, to encourage everyone to participate in the upcoming census. Between March 12th and March 20th, 
Most residences will be receiving their invitation to participate in the uh, census. And it's important for everyone to be counted because of the impact that this will have on our community for the next 10 years. The results of the census impact how hundreds of billions of dollars in federal funds are allocated across more than 100 programs, including highway construction, education, Medicare, Head Start, block grants for community mental health services, and school lunches. In addition, it impacts the congressional representation for our state. Businesses also use the census data to decide where they're going to expand, how they're going to change their marketing programs, and what services they need to offer in a particular area. So participation is critical to make sure that we get our fair share. It is important for everyone who lives here to participate. And I say lives here. There's some fear, some uh, concern that uh, if you're not a citizen or you don't have a Social Security card or you're not a registered voter, that you cannot participate. And I want to, we are very much spreading the word that's not the case. It is anyone that lives here as of April 1st. Um, the, com the Complete Count Committee has done a lot of reach out to different uh, sections of the community to alleviate those fears and, and help to spread the, uh, the importance of participating and uh, the different ways that they can participate. Uh, this year, you can respond online, over the phone, uh, or by mail. Uh, it's available in over a dozen languages on the website, and the question's very simple. Just your name, number of people staying at the location, if it's a home that you own or if it's a rental house, and uh, just some various demographic information. And all this in information is used exclusively for statistical reasons. It's not shared with law enforcement or ICE or even landlords. Uh, so we're encouraging everyone to participate. The results will help ensure our representation and the resources that we deserve that can improve the quality of life in our community. To facilitate participation, uh, there will be stations at the Burke County Public Libraries as well as the Senior Center that people can go and complete the census online. So with that, if you have any questions. It really is important for Morganton and Burke County. Absolutely. This is a one shot that we have every 10 years, so we need to make the most of it. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. Next on our agenda are some upcoming events at Comma. Uh, an American in Paris will be Friday, March 20th at 730. And Edward, Edward McCain will be playing Friday, April 3rd at 730. At downtown events, the ACC Chili Cook-Off will be Friday, March 13th from 11 to 1.30 at the Community House. The FAB Fab Crawl will be Saturday, March 14th from 11 to 8 p.m. throughout downtown Morganton. This time I'd like to call Scott Luckadoo, our Public Works Director, for a very important announcement concerning recycling. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, citizens of Morganton. Recycling is more than a necessity. It's, it's a worldwide environmental imperative. And I'd like first to thank everyone that does show the initiative and, and actually follows through and, and recycles. That's very important. Recycling has been an important program in Morganton uh, for many years, starting with newspaper recycling. The revenue created uh, a lot of the mini parks and flower areas, areas in Morganton. Uh, was instrumental in establishing the Good Habit Rabbit and a truck that we used to take care of our city. In 1992, Burke County banned cardboard disposal. Uh, Mayor Thompson, thank you for your leadership. You signed the ordinance, which also uh, requires the County of Burke to provide for cardboard recycling. So thank you for that. Uh, today, everybody in Morganton, everybody in Burke County, but also uh, citizens in Morganton are paying Burke County in taxes and fees for cardboard recycling and for recycling and, and solid waste services. Uh, the city of Morganton and the county of Burke have worked together to create a number of successful mechanisms to recycle uh, cardboard through incentives and through actual programs for, of collection. In Morganton, there are also uh, private contractors that are partnering, and thank you, Simply Green, for the efforts you do in providing a higher level of service in Morganton the city residents. Burke County and the City of Morgan established the convenience centers years ago and expanded recycling to commodities uh, that are viable in the recycling avenues or markets. And so recycling is in large part market driven. 
Contamination has always been a problem with the programs. Uh, Burke County fenced in all of their convenience centers and provided attendance on station to help people keep the, the solid waste and the recycling materials separated. Subsequently, the Morgan facility, which we have not manned, has collected more and increasingly greater amounts of, of unregulated solid waste disposal and contamination in our facility. The cardboard program specifically is no longer functioning. Republic Services, who we contract to, to uh, take our cardboard material to market, will not accept our material because of the contamination. And so the, the shot you see is the impact and the results. So the reality is that my, my employees have to clean up the site and collect the cardboard which was intended to be recycled because of the contamination and dispose of all of it as solid waste at the Burke County Landfill. The City of Morganton will no longer accept cardboard at the Shuey Field Recycling Convenience Center. The citizens of Morganton are encouraged to take advantage of the four convenience sites within a reasonable distance of the City of Morganton. The one down, down Highway 18 South is two miles from the city limits. And again, I encourage everyone to continue in the recycling effort until we can work through better solutions. Um, that's the best program in place for cardboard. Council, have any questions for Scott? Scott, thanks for all you do. It is a problem. And, you know, you just can't have contaminated that's stuff in, in the bins. Thank you so much. Okay. Next is our, uh, let's see, next is our report from the Municipal Power Agency, Sally. And there's no report this month. Consent agenda, I believe there's seven items, if you'll cover those. There are seven items. Would ask that you consider approving those in one motion, <clears throat> unless there is something that you would like discussed separately. For the folks viewing at home, those items include minutes from the regular City Council meeting held on February 3rd, and then the City Council workshop minutes from February 21st. Also setting the advertising date for unpaid real estate taxes, and that will be April the 1st, 2020. Awarding a contract to M&M Construction of Banner Elk in the amount of $55,182 to perform some waterline replacement work at Raider Circle. A budget amendment to receive $22,646.66 from the Morgan and Parks and Recreation Foundation, which will go toward constructing a covered pavilion at the skate park. Another budget amendment, $4,250, which is an insurance reimbursement from damage caused by an accident to a wayfinding sign. Finally, the... Two more things. The 2020 downtown calendar of events, um, something we approve every year, which sets us up for our street closures and activities for downtown events. And then finally, the 2020-21 urban archery season, um, approving this, and this is a program we've participated in for years, will then set us up and we will submit a letter of our intent to participate, which will go to the North Carolina Wildlife Commission. Do any members of council wish to have any items removed? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Under new business, we are here to have a public hearing. And at this time, I'll open the public hearing in consideration of a rezoning request to change the zoning for 1.70 acres of property located at 400 East Meeting Street from Central Business Conditional Use, CBCU, to Central Business District, CBD. Ask Philip Luckadoo to give us some insight, please. Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, what we would like to do is, is talk about this rezoning for uh, about 1.7, approximately 1.7 acres. I'll give you a brief history about it and um, about the rezoning history of this property tied to development proposals. Um, it, this property uh, is being submitted for rezoning from central business conditional use to central business district by Mosaic Development. Um, the property was re is, is bounded, as you can see, by Union Square Drive, White Street, 
East Meeting Street and Church Street. And it was part of a larger rezoning in 2004 that included the entire block around Union Square. And then again in 2012, that was the original rezoning was to uh, central or general business conditional use. In 2012, it was rezoned to central business conditional use. And then, um, and th that was a part of a, um, a development proposal that needed that rezoning designation to, um, to fit within an application. This is, as you are familiar, and I have reviewed the conditional use zoning, but I'll, I'll go over it real briefly. Conditional use zoning uh, was part of the old zoning code, and it is tied to a specific permitted um, or special use or conditional use permit. So it has a very specific set of criteria on it that if, if that project, for example, that when that was approved, it had building design plans, it had site plans, it had everything. And as long as a, a subsequent applicant comes in to build exactly per those plans, they're good to go. But if not, then they have to petition to rezone, and that has to be to a zoning designation that is similar to or most closely uh, similar to our current zoning designations, and in this case, that's Central Business District. Um, the property, this is a uh, view looking east, and you can see the uh, existing zoning that is, uh, is essentially across the street from Central Business District. The future land use uh, calls for it to be Central Business District zoning, and then we, um, looked at the staff recommendation, I'll, let, I'll leave that up there to read, but essentially we presented this to the Planning and Zoning Commission and, and they, they recommended unanimously nine to zero at their February 13 meeting um, to, to recommend rezoning the property. Uh, again, for all the reasons stated before, that it is um, essentially central business currently, uh, that it is proposed to be that in the future land use map and um, that is what we have before you tonight. Okay. Thank you, Philip. We may stand by for further questions, okay? Uh, would anybody like to speak uh, concerning this public hearing? Uh, please come forward. Identify yourself. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. My name is Kathy Stilwell. I'm the Executive Director of Mosaic Development Group the organization petitioning for this rezoning. Um, we're very pleased to have the opportunity to be here. Uh, we're excited about um, the potential to provide some housing uh, in the community that meets with your existing plans. Um, as I've mentioned before, we are a, a long-term nonprofit. Um, we intend to develop the property and maintain it and own it. So. We would be the people that um, you can reach out to at any point if you have any questions or any concerns about what's happening there. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions and provide any additional information for you or um, the community as needed. Kathy, these, uh, these will be mainly senior yes. affordable housing and yes. those criteria be age-wise because I'm getting close, so help me. 55 and over. 55 and over. Yes, sir. And the affordable price range would be roughly? Uh, let's see. They would be, there's a, a, a number of different tiers. Right. But essentially, um, a single person earning 33920 or less and a two-person household earning 38800 or less. As those uh, income limits are currently set by HUD, they do change annually. Okay. And you will be doing, your group will be man, actually managing. It won't be an outside management group, correct? We will hire a third-party third professional management firm. We found that um, it, we prefer that model because we monitor them very closely. We have an asset manager on staff that oversees the third-party property management, um, and that allows us to have better control over if things are not going the way we want, that we can replace that firm with a, a firm that is uh, performing. But our property management firm that we use manages almost all of our properties. They are very, very good at what they do. And you have other properties in North Carolina, I understand, correct? We have 22 other properties across the state. Okay. 
Other members of council have any questions? If you'll just remind us again the timeline for the facility should everything go through. Right. So our second application for funding will go to the state in the middle of May. I think it's the 15th. Um, they will make their funding announcements in August. So if we're successful, it'll take us about five or six months to complete the plans, get all the financing lined up, close, and we would typically start construction late first quarter or early second quarter of 2021. Other questions? Kathy, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Anybody else like to speak at the public hearing? not the public hearing is closed under other business oh sorry Maria. were we going to take a vote at this point was it there mm -hmm. okay yeah we actually need two motions we would first need to certify that the rezoning request is in conformance with our adopted mission 2030 land use plan what's the wish of council Motion to certify that this rezoning request is in conformance with Morganton's adopted Mission 2030 Land Development Plan. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. What's the wish of council? Motion to adopt an ordinance for a map amendment of approximately 1.70 plus or minus acres of property located at 400 East Meeting Street from Central Business Conditional Use to Central Business District. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, next on our agenda is consideration of award of contract to Gannett Fleming to perform construction engineering inspections, CEI services. Sally? Yes, so this is another one of our projects that keeps on giving and goes on and on and on. Um, this is our downtown Greenway connector, as we like to refer to it. Um, we have received grant funding to do a large portion of this project. It is federal funding, and it comes to us via the Department of Transportation, which means that it takes four times as long to do as if we were paying for it ourselves. Um, so one of the requirements for us to move forward with this and to put this project out to bid is that we have to hire a certified inspector. And that certified inspector, certified through DOT, has to be on site for this. And this has to be in place before we can go out to bid. So we are asking you to approve a contract. Uh, the cost for this contract and will be for the full term of the project is $161,823.66. It is a part of the grant funding in, in the project, so it will be paid for out of those funds, and it is calculated based on a formula for the size of the project. Okay. What's the wish of council? And before okay. we vote on that, I note there's, in your material, there's a discrepancy. Yeah, in the, <clears throat> the correct figure is 161. There is. I don't know where that other one came from. Okay. It's 161, right, Philip? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What's the wish of council? Well, I move that we award a contract of $161,823.66 to Gannett Fleming for the construction inspection services for the downtown Greenway Connector. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? Sally, this will tie in North Green Street and our Greenway, correct? It will. It will. From the trailhead, which is across from the senior center, and then wind down go through the neighborhood down by the um, aquatic center and by the rec center, go by the new school, school, come around to the intersection at Bushell, cross over into Catawba Meadows, and there'll be some work on that side so that you can walk comfortably into part of the disc golf course. Okay. I have a motion second. Any further discussion? Is this all the way to the existing Greenway? No, that. it, well, yes, it, it does, and so we have actually designed the, the end of it that goes through to have the least interruptions Perfect. to the disc golf course possible. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay, and the motion passes. 
consideration of entering into a CBDG small <laughs> business loan, Dogs Unleashed LLC. <laughs> Sally? Those initials are hard to say, aren't they? Okay. Um, so this is one of the small business loans each year, and we talked about this at the last meeting, and um, in our five-year consolidated plan, one of the programs that we do with the small amount of CDBG money we get is set aside some dollars to help generate jobs and to fund small businesses. So we have received a request um, from Tammy Hightower, who will own Dogs Unleashed LLC that will be located at 129 West Union Street. It'll be pet grooming and some high-end pet products that'll be sold out of there. Um, Tammy's sister is going to manage the business. She has um, currently a business that she owns and operates in called Blue Ridge Kennels in Asheville. And, and they do the same thing, but they also kennel there. We will not have dogs kenneled in downtown. <laughs> and we have had that question asked. Um, she is applying for and staff is recommending $30,000 that would be used to assist in the upfit of the building, the purchase of products and, and for the startup working capital, which is one of the eligible uses for CDBG monies. Um, this does meet the requirements of the Mission 2030 and of our CDBG small business program. What's the wish of council? Motion to enter into a 30,000 CDBG loan agreement with Tammy Hightower, Dogs Unleashed, LLC, for the purpose of purchasing equipment, purchase of pet products for retail sales, and startup working capital. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? In reading her um, business plan, it was well thought out mm -hmm. and um, appeared um, that they had checked all the boxes. Okay. Anything else? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next is consideration entering into a CDBG, Small Business Loan for Morganton Lodging Associates, LP. Sally. Mm -hmm. So this is another one that we, we have talked about for a while, and we're really excited to be at this point. Um, Ed's already talked about it tonight, so later this <coughs> week we have a new hotel opening, and that is the Fairfield Inn and Suites in downtown Morganton. Uh, David Bennett and Michael Crenn are the managing partners for Morganton Lodging Associates, and David is here tonight. Um, at the time that this project got started, they were in process to apply for a CDBG loan and got down to the end, and we recognized that you have to be able to have a certificate of occupancy in your business in order for us to fund the loan. So, obviously, the hotel was just getting under construction and couldn't do that. So at that time, the city council uh, did a bridge loan uh, to the LP with the future thought that they would come back and apply through this program in order to pay off the bridge loan and to get this. Um, they're going to be hiring a minimum of 12 full-time jobs, part-time jobs, but the full-time jobs are what really matter for this program. And uh, six of those in order to qualify, uh, must be low to moderate income persons. For this particular part, they are applying for $75,000, so our requirements are 10 jobs, six of those being low mod. Um, they, too, have turned in all of their business plan and all of their stuff and meet the requirements of the Mission 2030, and staff would recommend that you approve this <coughs> loan. What's the wish of council? Motion to enter into a CDBG loan agreement in the amount of $75,000 with David Bennett and Michael Crenn as managing partners for Morganton Lodging Associates, LP, for the purpose of startup working capital for the Fairfield Inn and Suites to be located at 400 North Green Street. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. David may want to come tell us when the yeah. grand opening David, will you come forward and port, <laughs> give us some good news? <laughs> Thank, you. thank you for being here. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And uh, it's been a couple years <laughs> in the process. <laughs> it feels longer than that, but uh, we're very appreciative for everything that, that the council has done and, and everyone from the city as a whole top to bottom has been has been very um, influential, impactful to make this actually actually work and happen. So 
we will be opening on the 6th. Uh, that's the official date. And uh, we're very excited. Um, from outsider perspectives who are coming in, they're, they're all very, very uh, happy with the execution so far, what we've done. And so it's really going to, I think, help just further accentuate and, and put, a, you know, put us on the map as far as downtown Morganton. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Will you be having an official ribbon cutting type event? We will. We're working on the dates right now uh, and working with Sharon on that. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Okay, always good news. Yes. <laughs> Next, let's talk about consideration of award of contract for geotechnical services for soul, soul boring Burke Business Park site. Mm -hmm. Sally. Uh, you will also recall that. Um, BDI is working to get water and involving a water tank and appurtenances at the Burke business site. And in doing so, are eligible for some state money. The county agreed to put up the match, the local match for that. And the city agreed to fund and spearhead the um, engineering services for that work. And this is part of that. Uh, it's going to require soil borings and some testing out there. Uh, we took informal bids for it, received those on Tuesday, February the 25th. We received four bids. The lowest responsive responsible bid was submitted by ESC Carolinas LLC in Asheville. The amount is $6,300. The four bids range from $6,300 to $9,900. Um, would recommend, staff would recommend that you consider awarding this contract to ESC Carolinas. What's the wish of counsel? Motion to authorize and contract with ESC Carolinas LLC of Asheville, North Carolina in the amount of $6,300. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Sally, this money is going to come out of the Water Resources Department budget. It is um, because ultimately the, the tank and appurtenances will become an asset of the Water Department. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Do we want to do consideration. Yeah. We have one thing that was added to the agenda. Uh, it's consideration of appointments to the Historic Preservation Commission. It's a city council appointment. There currently is a vacancy on the Historic Preservation Commission. Darrell Lathan has expressed an interest in serving as a member of the commission. Appointments are for a three-year term. However, this would be a midterm appointment, which expires on June of 2021. What's the wish of council? Motion to appoint Darren Lathan to the Historic Preservation Commission for a term to expire June 1st, 2021. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, we now need to have a closed session to discuss location or expansion of economic development projects as per General Statute Section 143-318.11A-4. So we will now go into... We need a, need motion. a motion. I need a motion, please. Motion to go into closed session pursuant to General Statute Section 143.318.11A-4 <laughs> to discuss location or expansion of industries or other business in the area served by the city. I have a motion. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? And I believe we will invite Mr. Wood to join us in the closed okay. session. All in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. No action. Aye. aye. Motion passes. And there will be no action taken after the closed session. Okay.